If we look at this app mention, this is really exciting because what's happening here is you can see your name. So this user that's logged in, you know, when Daniela was actually mentioned. So someone used, you know, mentioned verbally this person, which is actually really exciting because you can actually, if you're watching a recording and you want to look for those flags of when someone mentioned your name, you can quickly jump to those sections of the video. Hi everyone. My name is Richard Harbage. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I wanted to talk to you guys about Teams Premium. Microsoft Teams Premium is something that's coming in 2023, and it's a set of new capabilities that further enhances and enriches Microsoft Teams, not just in meetings, which is like a core scenario most of us use it for, but also for virtual appointments and, of course, for webinars. Now, it's important to note that Teams Premium does not mean you can't continue to use it in the way you have been. You can continue to use Microsoft Teams to solve lots of other problems in your organization. But what it does mean is that some advanced capabilities for webinars like uh, wait lists, which is a great thing for registrations, uh, one of great features that we've all been wanting for a while, uh, that will be in premium or manual approvals or a green room and control uh, you know, in the, in the presentation work or even uh, automated email reminders without you know having to fully invest in an entire dynamics marketing experience and, and a variety of tools like that so um with without further ado let's just dive right in to a few slides and talk about this in a little bit more detail now teams premium is coming in 2023 one of the key capabilities is this idea of meeting guides which are just basically meetings that are predefined pre-planned pre-designed for you to streamline the experience. A lot of times when you create, say, a client call, you might have specific parameters and settings. Maybe you want to admit people on the meeting and have settings and configurations like that. Maybe it's very different for a different type of meeting. This gets more and more robust and more important as you start to add apps and experiences into your meetings. So it's really great that there's this capability for us to kind of help guide people towards the kind of the pre-configured meetings the way that should be for that, that best outcome. And I think that uh, this is a great set of functionality that's coming uh, in one of the capabilities that Premium provides. Another key capability of Premium, and this is one that unfortunately I struggle a little bit with because I think it should be core, but whatever, uh, is the ability to have branding uh, experiences and have control of, you know, what does that waiting room experience look like when you're going to join a meeting? Uh, so, you know, if you've ever been in a Teams meeting, it's a very uh, generic experience. Now it'll be able to have different types of branding and experience elements. In addition to that, um, another huge enhancement is the way meetings and post-meeting activities will now work. After a meeting, there'll be sort of a summary around what happened during that meeting. This summary, if you click into it, will look like this, but it'll tell you more about the recording of the meeting, with automated uh, chapter uh, extraction, uh, things like the transcript, the attendance, and who attended the meeting and when they attended it. Again, different types of data insights, uh, depending on the privacy and rules in your organization of how you configure this stuff. But a ex simple example, being able to look up, okay, here's a suggested follow-up task. So it's recommended by the system. We could ignore it, or we could look at why is it recommending this? Oh, because Daniel Mandera said, hey, show demos about new features at this particular time. I can go to that part of the video and go watch it. Um, and so, yeah, that makes sense. Let's create that as an action item. And that's really helpful to understand, you know, what's been going on in the meeting. So not just the automated transcript, but actually uh, action item extraction. This is another reason why a lot of times people use these Teams meetings and record them, even when there's a hybrid meeting or an in-person meeting, because it adds so much value on the back end, sort of a digital assistant uh, in the meeting with you. Uh, following up on items. And of course, that's actually happening live in these meetings for pre Teams Premium users. They'll see these suggestions in real time, and then they can choose whether to action them, to remove them, to kind of triage that as they go through the meeting. Uh, very, very helpful as we get to the end of the meeting so we don't miss any key action items, and it really does speed this along. Another thing that's really nice about this is that the chapters are automatically generated. Now, you may not have used chapters before. Maybe you don't even find that the idea of them valuable. So let me just explain why this is so helpful. A lot of times what we have is we have meetings and there's sort of uh, agenda items, right? There's things that we talk through in that meeting. And sometimes we're really lucky. Those are really st well-structured meetings. Everyone knows we're going to talk about X 
uh, till you know uh, this time, and then we're going to switch to why. Um, but a lot of times our meetings aren't well structured, and they kind of uh, ping pong on different ideas and concepts. And so when you're watching a meeting recording later, or maybe you were only able to attend part of it, things like that, it's really helpful to be able to just dive right back in. So chapters is actually in combination with another really wonderful capability, which is this sort of timeline view. So chapters being automated first is really nice because uh, most people aren't going to spend the time and energy to, you know, create chapters for non-corporate communications, you know, like town halls and strategic meetings, right? Uh, so having those chapters makes it really easy to kind of jump around to different sections of the content. And uh, this will just get more robust over time. If we look at this app mention, this is really exciting because what's happening here is you can see your name. So this user that's logged in, you know, when Daniela was actually mentioned. So someone used, you know, mentioned verbally this person, which is actually really exciting because you can actually, if you're watching a recording and you want to look for those flags of when someone mentioned your name, you can quickly jump to those sections of the video. And I really love this feature. You can see that there's this little plus and uh, sort of exit sign. What that is, is that's when, and it's just for your visibility, by the way, again, privacy is respected and all of this stuff, but you'll be able to see when you joined the meeting and when you left it. Very, very helpful when you're looking at the recordings later, because you probably don't need to look at a lot of this information. You can just jump to the sections that you haven't seen before. Again, when combined with that at mention, with the chapters and a few of the other things we mentioned already, like the task extraction, we really are talking about a huge performance optimization experience when it comes to you know, the, the time shifting you get when you're looking at meeting recordings. So uh, great features, um, highly worth uh, the premium uh, discussion. And even the ability to share, of course you can share a point in time, like so I can share this particular moment when someone at mentioned me and like a link to somebody, but being able to share a chapter is also a really great experience. Being able to jump to that section and say, hey, you know, just can you watch this section, this chapter? Again, ways so we can communicate to people what we need them to watch versus an entire two or three hour workshop or something with a client that we might do. Very helpful that I can tell a staff member, just look at this section as an example. And then of course, uh, that none of the capabilities that you may be already familiar with, with like Microsoft Stream, with searching, the transcripts is gone. In fact, um, again, this is to give you that full robust capability. So maybe you're looking not just for your name, like these app mentions, but when another person was mentioned, like Alan here. And so by doing that, we can look at when Alan spoke, what Alan said, you know, when was Alan mentioned? These are all things that we could explore within the transcript. Similarly, it's really important to have confidence in our meetings, to make sure that our meetings are highly secure when they need to be, um, extremely uh, protected and encrypted. And so we see this option to really take that uh, you know, to the next level and really provide that end-to-end -end encryption experience that many, many customers are looking for. So I think this is going to be strategic for specific types of customers, but one that um, for our financial customers and a number of other customers that we work with today are really excited about this particular one. And um, to take a, another step forward, another feature that's really interesting about Teams Premium is this virtual appointments capability. Now, this may not be for everyone. Again, there's a books with book with me, right? A book with me capability in Outlook where you can coordinate this ability for people to click on a meeting and then book one with you and so on and so forth. Or there's bookings, which is another capability in Microsoft 365. There's been a lot of change that Microsoft's made to improve this experience. What you're seeing here is this idea that sometimes what you need is a virtual appointment with someone and you really need that to be clean and easy to understand. So what's happening is they get a single link the link brings them into that experience to join. They join this meeting room, waiting room. In the waiting room, they can still see information. They can still chat. They can ask questions. They can do things like that. So they're not waiting on you and that they can't join the meeting. They're not just in a lobby. They're in a, a way that they can chat and connect with you, especially for things like, hey, I'm running late. They jump on that call and they have a much better, better experience. So there's specific features that are quite nice about this. Now, these uh, bookings that you see are connected just like you've seen maybe Microsoft Bookings. This idea of coordinating schedules for virtual appointments is a really important one. And so you can see we have things like queued uh, scheduled requests, we have uh, analytics on those requests, and we have much more. And those little icons there are suggesting those are premium capabilities. So this is really exciting because as an organization that's used to bookings and book with me and other capabilities quite extensively in different sort of research tasks as well as our with our customers as well as on our own, uh, we have found this a challenge, right? You know, how do you 
create a queue and then schedule and then manage that queue, uh, this is a feature that we've all been waiting for for a long time. So it's great to see it coming to market. And of course, being able to analyze that is critical because we need to be able to, um, you know, make, make make better decisions on, you know, how do we triage and manage these virtual appointments in a more effective way over time. Um, so yeah, just in case that was a bit uh, quick, uh, I've got a little bit cleaner of an image here for you for reference as well. So lots of exciting things for those who have enjoyed bookings and uh, booking-like experiences. Now, I mentioned at the top of this that webinars is another key area that's improving. And so, of course, we have this a pattern where we actually see attendees uh, who have submitted, registered, essentially for the event, and we have the option to approve them. This is a really helpful experience because a lot of times with webinars, we might want to have a invite only or some sort of filtering mechanism for those who are allowed to come into certain meetings or to participate in certain meetings and webinars and things like that. And so this is a great way to manage that experience. Um, at the same, and while we can still use Teams webinars without something else in between, right? Now we can use the Teams webinar registration page, uh, which comes out of the box. Another example of that is being able to use this sort of ability to remind people that, hey, this webinar or this event and activity is coming up. Now, of course, if you use, you know, modern marketing tools and you have great tools like this, like Dynamics Marketing or other things like that, of course, you know you have ways of doing this. But what's happening for a lot of customers is they don't have those tools, especially internally. And so being able to remind people of a webinar, a key one that's coming up internally, just alone is well worth these kinds of capabilities. Um, if we take another example here, we also have this challenge where we have these events or these webinars. And a lot of times when we have these great discussions and uh, things, we kick it right off and we dive right into the webinar itself. This allows us to have a bit of a green room. It's a little bit easier to coordinate on the prep work around the webinar and then control what's actually displayed on the screen. So as an example, you can see that there's something that's off screen here, which is I can still see with confidence as the um, coordinator for the event or the webinar, like, hey, this person's ready with their camera for this next switch because I'm going to switch to their camera in a second. I can see those types of um, signals and things like that without necessarily all the audience seeing that. And that's an important thing because we want focus, right, from people and we want to improve that experience. So I really hope to see a lot more from here uh, coming out. And I hope uh, some of this Personally, I really hope some of these features also come into the Teams experience because I think it really is needed. But, um, but it's great to see that Microsoft's continuing to invest and innovate here. And I think webinars is a great place to, to start with some of this trialing. So um, I hope that's been exciting for you guys. Teams Premium is coming next year. I, th you know, I think, yes, it is unfortunate. It's a, another discussion of something that maybe your organization isn't already purchasing or investing in. But fundamentally, the benefits just from a productivity uh, perspective for meetings uh, in those core things that I talked about at the beginning, I, I think for a lot of customers, they're going to be a no brainer and it's going to be a really easy investment decision. So uh, for many of you, I think you're going to see a lot of these things light up in your own experiences in 2023. And if you're a leader, uh, you know, IT leader, and you're trying to make sense of this, keep in mind that this is only the team's premium capabilities. That's not the other team's capabilities that are coming. There's quite a bit that was announced at Ignite around new improved experiences for Teams, as well as, you know, Teams connected experiences, everything from Microsoft uh, Places to discussions on, you know, how do you get better signal data from better Viva Insights around meetings and much more. So with that, thanks everyone for your time and attention. I hope this helped you make a little bit more sense of what is Teams Premium today and why is it exciting. And uh, yeah, with that, have a great day.